use velvet underglaze and we also use decorating Keller's underglaze that lug and the lug and the velvet will blend together so it doesn't matter which one you use they all fire to the same temperature so it works out fine I try to mix and match my Keller's a little bit try not to use the Keller directly out of the bottle um, you can do it if you want I prefer not to so you know I mix up a palette of Keller's and I add water to them and I just keep using them over and over and over until they're gone pick a piece of pottery that you would like to paint and um, I do a lot of slip casting because my pieces turn out identical all the time so this is a piece of pottery that I slip cast from an original mold that I made and I'm going to use this yellow. I think I'm going to use this purple. Now these colors are mixed up from straight colors out of the bottles. Mix them together. They're all intermixable. And I like these two colors next to each other. So I'm going to randomly place some color onto this slip cast piece and try to give it two to three coats wherever you put it on so that it shows up really well it dries fairly fast Rinse the brush in between, straight to the next color. Little white areas won't affect anything. It's up to you how much white area you leave behind. I prefer trying to cover pretty much all of the white area myself. But it doesn't matter. The white areas don't show through that well. Okay. That's the base coat. Now I use a heat gun to dry it. All I'm doing is I'm speeding up the drying process. A hair dryer would work. I use a heat gun. Okay, you're looking to achieve a relatively dry looking effect, like flat paint. And that'll tell you that your underglaze is fairly dry. Okay, now the next steps, 
to start adding details. And this is random, and it's according to whatever you prefer. This is where the artistic part comes in. Now, I use some Sambo, and they're an underglaze stencil. Okay? Company by the name of Sambo. Ceramic decal. Okay, you can purchase these online. They work out really well. They're a underglaze pattern printed on a piece of rice paper. They come in different colors, different sizes, cut them any way you want them. It's a random placement, however you choose to place it. Now I'm going to use blue and black today because those are the colors of choice. They're adhered by water. They work fairly well. Uh, sometimes they work better than other times, but they work. And I kind of like them as a starting point. It's the base that I work from. Okay, so I'm going to use a blue one. And I'm going to place the blue over the gold area. Okay, and I think I'll choose this area right here. And all that it takes is some water, some clear water, right on top of the stencil. And you try not to go back and forth over top of it like you're painting. Just one layer of water on it, and that'll be suffice. If you go back and forth like you're painting, it has a tendency to blend the colors together, and you really don't want that. Okay, so this is what you're after. I take the heat gun and I hit it real quick. When it becomes white and opaque, it means it's fairly dry. And that's, that's what you're trying to achieve. You can buy these heat guns really cheap at Home Depots, Lowe's, online, Amazon, or anywhere like that. You don't need a super good one, and it doesn't have to be super powerful. Okay, then peel off the rice paper once it is dried, some semi-dried, not totally dried. And this is what's left behind. The decor. The decoration that was on the paper. That's pretty slick, I think. That's one step closer to being where you want to be. Now I have another piece of blue. I'm going to add this one probably right here. Some water. That's all it takes to adhere it. Oops. It's upside down. Make sure you put the color side down, not like I just did. And if you're cooking up, you can grab it and flip it. And it'll still work. Okay. So we'll let that dry for a second or two. Heat it up, dry it off. type of tool, a needle tool, or anything like that to peel this off is fine. I have a dental pick, which works really well. You can see how well that adheres to the underglaze. Now there's an area that's not real good, but You'll never see it at the end. I have a couple black pieces as well. And some black. And I'm going to put the black pieces more over the purple, I think. So it shows up really well.
Okay. Give this a chance to dry with some heat. Up here one more. Okay. An airbrush from Harbor Freight, very cheap, not very expensive, small compressor. Some black underglaze, thinned down with a few drops of water so it sprays through the airbrush. And some stencils. Now I'm going to use a flower stencil. To mock the pattern that's on there. And I have some stencils here, so I'm going to go through the book and find myself a nice flower stencil. And I think I'll use a few leaves as well. Okay, so we use these flowers. That's a dogwood flower. I'm going to tape the stencil up a little bit to hold it in place and so that the overspray doesn't get too out of control on my piece. Dogwood stencil. And I'm going to put a few of these on there random. Turn the airbrush on, you probably won't be able to hear me. Right there.
And this is where your creative ability comes into play. You just don't know what you're going to do or how you're going to do it. <coughs> Until you start doing it. I'm going to take the heat gun. I'm going to dry these flowers. You keep trying to dry all this stuff because you don't want it to smear when you touch it. Okay, now I think I'm going to paint some leaves. Use this green color. We go with some stems and leaves on here. Pretty fine brush. Put the stem in first. You gotta remember, two to three coats. So you'll have to go over the stem and over the leaves a couple times. Okay, so the camera battery died. We lost track of what we were doing, so I'm gonna go over some of this again with you. Use the green, and we painted in the stems and the leaves. The green stems and leaves. Okay, painted two coats on the green stems and leaves. Took a black liner brush and I went over it and added some detail into the leaves and the stems. Okay, then I went back and took black with the liner brush and the ends of all this black work that was from the underglazed stencil. I tried to add some ending detail to it so it wasn't just totally square. Put some lines in there, faded off a little bit all the way around and worked that the, the full way around. And I took and I added a couple leaves in to fill in some of the blank spaces. And uh, there's another leaf up there. Painted pink over top of the petals on some of the flowers. And white lines over top of some of the petals on the flowers. And that added some detail to them. I took orange. I had some stars in here. I like to put these little stars in there. And then I took black and I put some ticks and tacks all over the whole entire thing. Okay, and what I mean by ticks and tacks, I mean these little details like this. They're just little ticks and little tacks that I just put all over to fill in little blank spaces and give a little extra decorative quality. And after I did that, I took a liner, like this, with white in it. And I put these lines around the top and around the bottom, all the way around. Now I do that on everything, because it kind of pulls your attention into the center here. And that's where the detail and the artistic part comes into play. Paint the inside with whatever color you want. I did this one with turquoise. Paint the bottom, signed it. Get a little bit of detail on the bottom. Now I use a brush that I make. These are made out of deer hair. The tail of a deer hair. Tail of a deer. The hair of the tail of a deer. Okay. You take a tuft of the, the hair off the tail it goes to a point, cut it off, tie it up, and make this little furl of hair. Then I take a piece of bamboo, 
you buy in the garden section at Walmart or wherever, Kmart, wherever you can find them. Drill the hole in the top of it to fit the furrow into. Split it a few times. Put the furrow in. Wrap the entire furrow with thread and epoxy it. 